in neurons ish. Now, what does this actually mean, right? This is, so these are just numbers here. What does this actually mean? So what I want you to do is take your two fists, make two fists and put them together. Go ahead and do it yourself. If you look then at your hands put together as two fists, this is going to be approximately the size of your brain stuffed inside your skull. Now, I don't know about you, the first time I did it, very first time I did this, I was surprised at how small it is. Maybe I have a big head, I don't really know. Who knows what that means? I also know that some of you are gonna have larger hands than others. Don't take it too seriously. This is only approximately how big your brain is. Now, we know the brain is really important for a lot of different reasons, and one of the reasons is because even though for an adult human, the brain weighs approximately 2% of your body mass, at rest, it occupies approximately 20% of your metabolic costs. So about 20 percent of the calories you're burning at any particular moment when you're not doing anything, this is not true if you're running a marathon, is devoted to just keeping the brain alive and functioning and ready to do the next thing that it's getting ready to do. So that's one indication of how important it is. Now, a few more things about the brain that I think are really interesting. Just uh, I like thinking about size scales and, and time scales. The brain uh, has this wrinkly bits on the outside. We'll have a later video talking about exactly what those are and why they're there. The short version of the story is that that's what you're looking at is a very outer layer of the brain called the cortex. It's kind of like a helmet that's on the outside. And it's wrinkly because it's actually a two-dimensional sheet, approximately, that's quite a bit larger than what you can stuff inside your skull. If you took it out, if you took the cortex out, shook it out and ironed it, you get a sheet that is, uh, well, you know, it's actually approximately the size of a towel, a small hand towel like this one. So if you can kind of imagine wrinkling it up and then stuffing it inside your head, I don't remember actually doing this, that's approximately how large your cortex is. I told you the cortex is also a two-dimensional sheet, so what does that mean? Well, it's actually remarkably thin. Um, I have a, something like, like a credit card, okay? So if you take a, any credit card and look at it, you can see how thin it is. That's approximately two millimeters. So the entire cortex is about that thin, and in fact, the size of a regular credit card is about the size of your primary visual cortex. If you imagine taking one of these credit cards, folding it in half, and then stuffing it in the back of your brain, that is the size of your primary visual cortex. So those are kind of cool things that I like to telling people the first time I introduce them to brains. But anatomy is only a very small part of our understanding of neuroscience and neurobiology. So as a neuroscientist, um, I happen to be a type of neuroscientist comp called computational neuroscientist. And what that means is that I really like thinking about mathematical models and different ways that we can analyze data from both brain and behavior. And so rather than giving you a uh, syllabus first, what I'm going to tell you first is my perspective of why I'm a neuroscientist, how it is that I feel like this is a really interesting thing that's going to occupy not only the rest of my career, but hopefully the careers of lots of other people in the world as well. So from my perspective, one of the coolest things about neuroscience is that the brain has multi-scale structures in space. Now I'm gonna break that down and tell you what I mean by that phrase. What we're looking at here on the vertical axis is what's called a logarithmic axis in size. And so every tick mark is 10 times larger as we go up. Okay, so right here is a millimeter, we have a thousandth of a millimeter, and then we have a meter up here. So. The reason that the brain is cool, one of the reasons the brain is cool, is because it has really cool, interesting structures that are worth studying at every single scale of description. The smallest thing that we sometimes think about in neuroscience is the size of a synapse. So the cells of your brain are called neurons, and neurons uh, talk to each other at these junctions called synapses. The, mammal, the human brain has 86 billion neurons. On average, every neuron in your brain makes 1,000 to 10,000 synapses with other neurons, and so there's a ton of these things inside your brain right now. We're only looking at one of them. Now, despite having lots and lots of them, and you see these are really tiny structures, they're in fact extraordinarily complicated and very, very cool. There's gonna be a video all about the synapse later on. It is so cool that you think about the infrastructure that goes into running and keeping alive and functioning one of these synapses, it has the complexity of a small city. We have things like roads, we have garbage collection, we have power plants, we have recycling plants even, this is very green here. And that is only one synapse among all of the synapses that go into running your brain and your nervous system. But of course, that's not all because every neuron, and you maybe see pictures of neurons, like a couple of drawings of the ones over there, neurons are also cool because they actually have non-trivial geometry. They're not blobs like generic eukaryotic cells that you might have learned about when you first learned about cells in grade school. 